Andrew Barry continues to stay busy here on day two of free agency. He made three more signings today after signing Jameis Winston and Naheem Hines earlier today. We actually made a video about that, so if you missed those signings, feel free to check them out. But let's run through the Shelby Harris signing, and then we also had two offensive linemen get, saw, uh, get signed. But I would say Shelby Harris, the most notable of the three names most recently signed by Cleveland. You can look at Shelby Harris's stats from last season, 28 tackles, six tackles for loss, one and a half sacks. Maybe my favorite stat of all, five pass breakups. I know pass breakups as a defensive tackle doesn't look like an eye-popping stat, but he did have a habit of getting his big paws up and batting down passes at the line of scrimmage. PFF, by the way, ranked him 31st out of 130 qualifying defensive tackles, and he cashes in on a two-year, $9 million contract. So now we look at the three defensive tackle free agents, which we've been talking about for quite some time, and I was saying for quite some time, I think the most likely outcome here was going to be the Browns bring back two out of those three guys. I thought it was for sure going to be Maurice Hurst because I thought he was going to be the cheapest of all three, and he might even be the best of all three, actually. And then it would come down to Jordan Elliott and Shelby Harris, which one would likely be a little bit on the cheaper side, slash I bet the Browns actually even preferred Shelby Harris because Jordan Elliott showed three years of non-starting defensive tackle play and then a really good 2023 season in a contract year, which means if there were going to be a couple of suitors for Elliott, I wouldn't mind the Browns kind of backing out of a very subtle bidding war and just roll with Hurst and Harris, who I would say were better than Elliott last year. So now the Browns roll into 2024 currently with basically the same four-ish starting defensive tackles like Jordan Elliott, Shelby Harris, and Maurice Hurst all did a pretty good rotation at that second DT spot. So even if Elliott does not return, which that door is not completely shut, but it definitely sounds very unlikely, the Browns are going to have a lot of familiarity back on that defensive line that just kicked ass last year. I think this was a moment where Andrew Barry didn't have to overthink it, didn't have to pull up the film too much, just stop and go. Defensive line was great last year. It was the best defensive line in a lot of ways in Cleveland Browns history. You don't have to overthink this one. Let's just run it back. Sometimes running it back is a bad idea, but sometimes it's a very good idea. And I think this was a good decision by the Browns to bring back Maurice Hurst and Shelby Harris. Sure, a DJ reader would have been a lot of fun. I think he's better, most likely, than your Shelby Harris and Maurice Hurst, but he's probably going to be twice as expensive as those guys. And the Browns just historically, at least under Andrew Barry, have not invested a ton of money up until Dalvin Tomlinson at that spot, which is why I never thought we'd actually see Christian Wilkins come to Cleveland. That was always a bit of a pipe dream. And the Browns, I think, they don't just play it safe. Like They just go for a double with bringing back two awesome DTs last year in Hurst and Harris. So grade the re-signing of Shelby Harris. A, B, C, D, or F. Give it a B plus. Like, DJ Reader was a popular name. I know he was loosely rumored to Cleveland. That would have been super cool. I think he's one of the best interior defensive linemen in football. However, that's going to cost you a little bit more. He's also coming off an injury, a torn quad, pushing 30 years old. It's not like Maurice Hurst has always had a clean bill of health, but I still feel like bringing back Hurst and Shelby Harris can't be deemed a bad decision by any stretch. So for me, I'm a fan of this decision right here for the Browns to bring back those defense, those two defensive tackles, bring back to Darius Smith yesterday, and you are getting the band back together. And this defense, there is an element of, as much as we want to evaluate them purely based off of PFF and pro football reference, Let's not lose sight of, there's a human element. Like, these guys are more than just stat keepers. Like, they are humans, and if you've ever played on a sports team before, you know that there is an important element of having quality teammates, and this defense loved playing with one another. And I'm happy to see that they're keeping much of the 2023 defense intact. Now, as the linebacker position goes, remember, they added Jordan Hicks to a two-year $8 million contract yesterday. I think he takes over a middle linebacker from Anthony Walker. It's a, you know, bitter departure for Walker because he was so good and such a great leader. But 
Ultimately, they couldn't really keep Anthony Walker on the field. So Jordan Hicks comes over. He's played really good football the last few seasons, going from Arizona to Minnesota, where he was a Viking for two years. So I do like the Jordan Hicks signing. I didn't expect the Browns to make a big swing at the linebacker position. I thought Levante David would have been an awesome vet pickup, but Hicks on a two-year, $8 million contract. He's not going to be a playmaker linebacker. He's not going to force a bunch of fumbles or interceptions, but he's going to stop the run, and he's not going to get burned in coverage. And for two years, $8 million, that's all I need him to do. Now, we have more free agent signings to talk about here on the channel, but make sure you are subscribed because there's just no other channel out there that's going to keep you up to date on all things Cleveland Browns during NFL free agency. So if you haven't joined nearly 34,000 strong yet, please go ahead and do so. Let's switch gears and let's talk about two more signings the Browns made. Akeem Adenaje, the offensive tackle, originally with the Cincinnati Bengals, and then he went over to the Minnesota Vikings last year, where he was sort of their James Hudson. I think that's the best uh, analogy I can give. So Akeem Adenaje, in his career, you can look at his stats, uh, 43 games played. He has 15 starts between Cincinnati and Minnesota. He was a six-round draft pick by the Bengals. Uh, 171 snaps at left tackle, 500 and is that 55? Yeah, at right guard, and then 219 at right tackle. So he's got versatility. He's played tackle. He's played guard, and I think this is your James Hudson replacement. I, I think the Browns move on from Hudson potentially, and they ultimately decide to make Akeem Adenaje their six man, right? And we'll see if this means anything big for a Jack Conklin move or anything like that, or if it's simply the Browns going, we learned last year how valuable it was to have depth at the offensive line, specifically the tackle position. So let's go get a cheap backup offensive tackle. I wouldn't read into that one too much. The other signing they made for the Hogs up front, Michael Dunn back on a one-year contract. He was a glue guy. He was a locker room guy. He like ripped his calf in half at one point, filling in for Joel Petoni in the 49ers game finished the game, went on IR afterwards, and then would come back and help him play later in the season. So I think this is a nice re-signing for the Browns to get Michael Dunn back. I thought they might have a target interior offensive line in the draft because when you look at the depth chart, Joel Petonio, Ethan Posick, Wyatt Teller, they're all under contract for this year and next year, but they all are going to have bigger cap hits in the future. So if Cleveland wanted to start planting some seeds to maybe replace one of those guys by picking a guy this year and then having him kind of redshirt 2024 to maybe step into a bigger role in 2025. They could have gone that route, but ultimately they have decided to likely reduce the need for offensive line in the draft, which is a little bit surprising because this offensive line class is loaded this year. So if there was a time to go get offensive line, this would be the draft to do it. But Michael Dunn, back on a one-year contract, he's going to be your interior offensive line backup if, God forbid, Batonio or Teller were to go down. Could probably even fill in at center if needed since Nick Harris is a free agent as well. So let's kind of uh, recap everyone on all the moves the Browns have made so far in free agency. They started off by trading for Jerry Judy, which I told you all before free agency, the Browns under Andrew Barry are not big free agent spenders as much as they love just making trades in free agency. And that was their splash move they made. Also brought back Darius Smith. Love that contract. Love that move. Maurice Hurst, one year, $3.2 million. Of the three defensive tackle free agents, kind of my favorite, and he's also the cheapest. So it's just ultimate value right there. All right? Jordan Hicks, middle linebacker, two-year, $8 million contract. Then earlier we talked about this. Jameis Winston, one-year deal, up to $8.7 million. Little surprise, they didn't bring back Joe Flacco. Would love to know what really happened. because Both sides wanted a reunion. And then he's still a free agent, and the Browns pivot to Jameis. What changed? Were the Browns never serious about bringing Flacco back? Did Flacco not want to come back because he wanted to wait and see if he could get a starting gig elsewhere, at least compete for one. And the Browns said, well, listen, we don't want to wait and risk losing out on you in a few weeks, and then there's no good backup quarterbacks to sign. So I would love to know what really went down in Berea, because 
part of me wonders, and maybe this is just me reading into it too much, and that's a very real possibility. Browns didn't want to bring back Joe Flacco and have a bit of an elephant in the room, in the locker room of, hey, we have Deshaun Watson as our starting quarterback, and the NFL Comeback Player of the Year, who led us to the playoffs last year in some ways, we actually going to stick him on the bench. Don't you feel like the noise in the locker room might get a little loud if Watson has a bad half or a bad game and people are wondering, should they put Flacco back in? Maybe the Browns just wanted to avoid that possibility altogether. Naheem Hines, as a running back, one year up to $3.5 million. I wish they were able to go get a bigger running back. I know the running back market this year really ballooned up because the draft class is so weak. Teams that needed running back help in 2024 were going to do that in free agency and not in the draft. But I was, I guess, naive thinking they could go get a DeAndre Swift or an Austin Eckler or a Tony Pollard for a one-year contract between four to six-ish million dollars. Instead, they take Naheem Hines, who missed all of last season due to a boating accident. He was cut by the Bills. He was with the Colts for a while. He's always been a scat back, a receiving back as well. Picks up pass rushers nicely. I'm not confident, to be honest with you guys, that Hines and Jerome Ford can get the job done together. If that's truly the makeup of the running back room for five, six, seven, eight weeks, whenever Nick Chubb comes back, hopefully Chubb does not miss much time. Otherwise, this ground game is going to look a lot like the way it ended last year, which was painstaking, painstakingly slow. Michael Dunn and Akima Donage, and then we had most recently Shelby Harris, two-year, $9 million contract. So all things to considered, I think all the signings so far have been pretty good because they haven't really spent a ton of money. It's hard to be upset when the biggest contract given out is $24 million in terms of whether or not you like, like whether or not you uh, hate the contract. Like, sure, they could have swung for bigger pieces, but I didn't think the Browns would be doing that. I thought they would be a little bit quieter this free agency period compared to last year. Remember last year, they kind of opened it up by signing Okoronkwo, and then they got Dalvin Tomlinson. This year, they're really just focusing on being the Dallas Cowboys of the AFC North, just holding on to our own guys, and then slapping some flex seal on a couple of other minor holes, but they weren't going to buy a brand new boat. All right, let's wrap up the show by picking a card. I've got producer Tyler Smith hanging out with me today. Smitty texted me yesterday, and he's like, hey, we're working together tomorrow. I'm like, let's go. He's like, what time? I was like, bright and early, buddy. He's like, oh, boy. So he picked him up. And off we came in. We've got a lot done so far today. We've got a lot done so far. I'd say we're the real MVPs of free agency day two. Oh, no doubt about it. The rest of the chat sports crew, they got their dicks in their hands. Sleep around. at the wheel. Okay. Uh, which card do you want to go with? Uh, give me a jack of clubs. Andrew Barry. Looks like an ace. Okay. Ace of, uh, ace of hearts. All right. He's got a good heart. I like that. I thought about this one. And I didn't say it. Jack of hearts. Oh, it was just to, just to suit off. That's a tough scene. Tough scene. All right, those are the signings made by the Cleveland Browns so far in day one and day two of NFL free agency. I don't think you're going to see a whole lot more other than some roster fill-out signings of guys coming in just to compete for a roster spot. I think you're going to see a lot of the guaranteed money that's been given out in contracts pretty much all given out already. So don't have high hopes for the Browns making another big splash signing. Can never quite rule them out of a trade. They still have pick 54 to, you know, hold in front of a team if they want to go get a guy like maybe Khalil Mack from the Chargers, although it wouldn't cost you round number two to get him. So we we're going to sign off. Thank you so much for tuning into our coverage. More of it coming your way, so make sure you are subscribed to the channel. 